Hi everyone, my name is Kevin. Today I wanna to show you how you can set up a live event in Microsoft Teams. And as full disclosure, before we jump into this, I work at Microsoft as a full-time employee. My HR department requires me to say that anytime I talk about Microsoft products. Now, if you're brand new to Microsoft Teams and you're just trying to figure out how to use Teams, I've done a video on that. I'd recommend starting there. However, if you're a more veteran user of Teams and you're looking at what some of the advanced functionality is, live events is a really nice new piece of functionality that you could take advantage of. Now, first off, what is the difference between a live event and just a standard meeting in Microsoft Teams. Well, with a standard meeting in Microsoft Teams, imagine you have, say, 10 people. Everyone can talk with one another. Anyone can share their screen. You could see everyone's video. It's a very collaborative session. With a live event, it's much more of a broadcast. So imagine you're back in college and you're sitting in a lecture and the professor has a lot of information to share and it's a one-way communication stream. Or maybe you work at a company where an executive wants to talk about the quarterly results and it, let's say it's an all hands format and so it's the executive sharing and the employees listening. Those are two great examples of where a Teams Live event is the right type of event to set up. And so depending on the type of event you need to set up, a live event, event might be the right one for you. And today I'm gonna to show you how in Teams you can get that set up. Luckily, whether you're setting up a meeting or if you're setting up a live event, it's pretty easy to set up either one. All right, well, why don't we jump into it and I'll show you how to set up a live event. Here I am in Microsoft Teams and I'm just in the standard Teams view here. And to set up a live event, it's pretty simple. So what we're gonna do uh, to set up a live event is let's click on the calendar pivot over on the left-hand side. If you don't see calendar here by default, you could also click on the dot, 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 and you should be able to add calendar from down here. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on calendar and here's my calendar for the week. Now up in the top right-hand corner, you see this option that says new meeting. Now if I just click on that, that would open up a standard Teams meeting. If I wanna set up a live event, though what I want to do is I'll click on this drop down and now this shows me the two types of events or meetings that I could set up you could do your standard meeting or I could set up a live event and so today I want to set up a live event like I said before this is more of a broadcast now when I go into here, it's pretty similar to setting up a standard meeting. I could go ahead and I could set up a title. What I'm gonna do is a fictional company that I've used in previous videos is called the Kevin's Cookie Company. So we're gonna do the Kevin's, uh, so let's say this is uh, maybe a call with shareholders and I'm gonna share out how we performed. Uh, what I could do is I could choose a location um, and then I could also set the start and end time. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna choose maybe next Friday, we'll have this from three to 3.30, so on April 17th. And then I could also type in additional information. All right, so that's the details of the meeting. And now what I, what I could also do is I can invite additional pre, uh, presenters to this meeting. So this is anyone who I want to give the ability uh, to share during the meeting. And so my uh, friend Alex, I'll make sure I include him. He's one of our marketing assistants. And then you could also define the role of someone. So a producer has more control over who's up, what content is shown, versus a presenter has the ability to show content and also speak. Uh, but doesn't have quite as much permission as I do as Isaiah here. Um, so once all of that looks good, I have me set up as a producer, I have Alex down as one of the presenters, I could also include additional people if I want to, but otherwise all of that looks good and, and that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on next. Once I click on next, it's gonna ask me a few additional questions. There's a section here called live event permissions. Now I could choose specific people or groups who are able to join the live event, or I could set it up so anyone within my company can join. And then the third option, which is grayed out for me, is I could set this up as a public event. And as a public event, anyone could dial in and join this meeting. Uh, but the way this tenant is set up is it only allows me to set up to an org wide event. So I'm gonna go with that. And now as I scroll down, I'll see some additional features here that I could turn on or off. And we're just gonna run through what some of these are. Now by default, the recording will be available to the producer and the presenter. So meaning that me and Alex will get access to the recording. I could also make the recording available to attendees. Uh, that sounds like a reasonable option. I'll leave it checked. You could also turn on captions, which is in preview. 
Uh, you could also get an attendee engagement report. Or did people have the screen up the whole time? Were they watching? So kind of an interesting report that you could get. And then you could also turn on or off Q and A. So if you truly want it to be a one-way broadcast with no interaction at all, you could leave Q and A off. However, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on because maybe some people have questions about how the cookie company has been performing. With a Q&A, this is all typed feedback that you're getting. So people won't be able to verbally ask questions, but they will be able to type questions. And then as I go down here, what I can also do is it says you could use an external app or device uh, for the live event. However, in this case, I'm just gonna stick with the basics and use Teams to support it. Uh, and then I could also provide attendees with access to support info for your organization. And I just have the standard support information there. All right, well, all of these settings look good and that's all it takes to set up a live event or at least to schedule a live event. So I'm gonna go ahead and schedule this now and this will add the live event to my calendar. Now, a few things that I wanna call out here. So here it's now created the event. And if I wanna invite attendees to the event, it hasn't actually sent out a calendar invite to anyone yet. All it's done is it's created the event on my calendar and on Alex's calendar. And if I click join here, this joins me as a producer and in Alex's case as a presenter. And so we have additional permissions that we don't want attendees to have. So here, if I go down, I'll see the standard join a live event. But once again, this is just for both me and Alex to access. For attendees, I need to click on this get attendee link. And if I click on that, it says it's been copied to the clipboard. So what I could do is I could go to someplace like Outlook or wherever else I'm scheduling this meeting, or maybe it's on the company website or the, you know, a school team's channel, and I could paste that link in and that'll give people access to the live event. Um, so that's how you disseminate out the live event information to attendees. So all of that looks good, and this event is now all set up. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And here I see it on my calendar on the 17th at three to 3.30. Now, if I click into this event, and do one thing to call out, you see this little icon here. This is the live event icon, just to let me know that this is a live event going on. So if I click on this event now, what I can do is I'll join the event. And similar to, hey, there I am in the camera, similar to a standard Teams meeting, well, what I can do is I see my video and I could also see my microphone setting right here. I'll go ahead and unmute that. I could also see my settings uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and join the event. Don't worry when you just join the event, it won't start broadcasting right away. So what's gonna happen now is this will drop me in the main event view. And now a few things I wanna call out. So here I can see the title of the meeting. I could also see the time that's elapsed. I currently have zero attendees in my live event. As attendees join, you'll see this number go up and it says pre-live. Now down below, I have a few different things on the screen and I wanna walk through what these different things mean. So over on the left-hand side, this is the queue. This is what's coming up next that I want all of my attendees to see. And over on the right-hand side, this is currently what's live. And now it's telling me the live event hasn't started yet. So what I could do now is I see my picture down here, I see my camera down here. What I can do is I can also go ahead and share content. So I'm gonna go ahead, let me click on share and I'm gonna bring in a PowerPoint presentation. So there I brought in, so here I brought in a PowerPoint presentation. So now I have my video here and I also have my desktop content right here. So what I could do is you see it says add video or content from below and then you have this single source or you could do content left. So let me show what those mean. So with single source, if I click on my video, what that'll do is that'll fill up the view just with my video. So this is a single source. If I click on double, uh, so content on the left, let me click on that. It'll put my video on the right hand side. And now if I click on content, it puts the content on the left and then my video on the right. And now imagine that Alex were to join the call, his video would also appear down here. And so if I click over here, I could then click on the video that I wanna have featured as part of this. So in this case, I'm the only one here. So I click on myself, I'm the featured one uh, over on the right hand side. And what I could do then is let's say I set up my view of my presentation, I have my video right here and I'm satisfied with the look. And let's say I start having attendees join. What I could do now is if I click on send live, this will send the video and the PowerPoint footage from my queue over to the live event. And so now whoever is on the live event will now see what's appearing here on the screen. And I could even go ahead and click on start 
And what this will do is this will start the live event. So you can't stop it once it's been started. Once you stop it, the event's done and it could last for up to four hours. What's interesting is attendees watch with a 10 to 20 second delay. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on um, go live. So this live event is now active. It's a live event, people could start joining and people will see both my video and my slide that I'm sharing on the screen. Now what I could do is as I'm say presenting content and you know, let's say I'm going through all my content over here on the right hand side, I could start to compose what's on the left hand side of the screen. So let's say uh, maybe I've shown the slide and I'm kind of done with that. What I could do now is I could click on my video and let's say I finish the slide and I'm happy with the way the next screen looks. What I could do now is I could click on send live and this will now send the full screen video over to the right hand side. Or maybe what I wanna do is maybe I just wanna share the content now and now I could click on send live and that'll, all, and that'll now send the PowerPoint presentation so it's the live view uh, over here on the right hand side. A few other things that I could do, so that's how I control what appears within the live events, whether it's a video, whether it's content that I'm sharing. Uh, what I also do is I also have some controls um, for the live event. So here, if I go up to the right-hand side, we're just gonna run through what these do. Um, so over here, I could see the health and performance of the event, so it gives me a little bit of information about you know, what is the bit rate, how does my network seem. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Uh, what I also have is the Q&A. Now this is gonna be the main way that you interact with your audience in a Teams live event. So unlike, uh, like I said before, a traditional Teams meeting, uh, you don't have the ability to talk with your audience, but you can read questions from your audience. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm gonna click on new and anytime someone submits a question, it'll come into this uh, basically a pending view or kind of a queue of questions. And you could go ahead and approve the question, dismiss the question, um, or you could even make an announcement that'll go out to everyone uh, who's part of the session. So maybe the session hasn't started yet and you wanna send an announcement saying, hey, we'll start in a moment. Or maybe you wanna send out a link to everyone. You could do that via uh, the announcement functionality. Um, and here you could also respond to questions, you could publish the questions, and if you end up dismissing any of the questions, they'll show up in the dismissed bucket. Uh, so you have control as a broadcaster or as part of a live event as to what questions show up to all of the attendees. You also have the ability to take uh, shared meeting notes that everyone can see. Uh, you also have the ability to chat. Now a meeting chat is limited to the producers and the presenters, so not all attendees will be able to see the chat here. The Q&A is the main mechanism for your attendees to interact. Uh, and then here what I could do is I could see all the participants. Now these are uh, these participants that show up here, this is limited to who's presenting, who's producing. So let's say I wanna add another presenter. Uh, so here, for example, I could type in, let's type in Megan. She's another person, our marketing manager at our company. I can then include her and that'll just automatically call her into the meeting. Once again, this is not where you uh, invite attendees. Instead, we did that previously when we copied the link. Uh, what I can also do is if I click on the settings gear, this is where I could choose my microphone, so my audio devices, I could set my speaker, um, I could also uh, configure my camera. Um, and then lastly, there's also information um, about how different presenters can join the meeting. But once again, you don't wanna share this out with attendees. This is for the presenters of the meeting. I showed previously how you could get the attendee information. Now, once you go through and the live event's all done, you'll see here it's recording the event by default. What I can do is uh, once it's all done, I'm gonna click on end. That'll end the event. Uh, let's say there are other presenters um, or maybe another producer in here. I can also leave the meeting and someone else can carry on. Um, so I don't have to be there for the meeting to continue on. Um, others can, can, uh, can continue without me. Uh, but the event, everything seems good. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna click on end. And what that's gonna do is that's going to end the live event. I'm gonna go ahead and click on end and you'll see here that it says the live event has ended. So any attendees joining at this point uh, will see that text in there. Uh, and now that the event's over, what I could do is I could click on leave and that will formally uh, terminate the live event for me. Uh, here I could go back, I could view the chat, I could see any meeting notes uh, and I have all the content uh, related to this live event. 
All right, well, that was just a quick tutorial of how you could use live events in Microsoft Teams. Like I said before, a live event in Microsoft Teams is much more of a broadcast where you wanna disseminate information, but you don't want as much interaction from the crowd. If you were able to successfully set up a Teams live event and this uh, helped you figure out how to work it, uh, please give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button. That way you'll get a notification anytime new content like this comes out. And lastly, if there are any other ideas that you wanna see me cover in the future, any other video topics, leave a comment down below. I read them all and I'll add it to my list of videos to create. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope you enjoyed and hope to see you next time. Bye.